Hi there, and it's good to have you logging on to Hoo-Ha Sports today. Wimbledon continues to take the sporting headlines where the tournament favourites have crashed out, while the underdogs keep us intrigued as they continue to spring surprises. And after missing the chance to claim her first Grand Slam title, Caroline Wozniacki gets a part-time job at Wimbledon. So the grass sport event gets us started and we must begin with Roger Federer, who was shipped out just like the package is nicknamed after by Joe Wilfred Songer in yesterday's men's quarterfinals. This was Federer's 29th consecutive Grand Slam quarters, hoping to make it 29 straight semis. And he looked to be heading there with wins in the first two sets. Because the stats reveal that FedEx has never lost a match from having been two sets up in a Grand Slam event. But it was Joe Wilfred who brought a little something extra to come back and win the next three in thrilling form of 6-4, 6-4 and 6-4. The stats clearly show that Federer played well. He had fewer double faults and unforced errors, but Songa was just that little bit better. Like I said, I think I'm playing well, you know, and I thought I, my game was plenty good enough this year to win the tournament, but unfortunately there's only one, you know, that can win it and... Uh, the rest go home with, you know, empty-handed. I think that's what happened to me today. I mean, I think Joe played an amazing match, like I said. Um, so obviously it's disappointing, but the game, you know, is there. I'm happy and healthy and feel much better than sort of a year ago. That's very encouraging, really. And uh, even though I took a, you know, tough loss today, I don't feel, uh, you know, discouraged in any way. I think that's key right now to not let, you know, anything get to me. And uh, I'll work harder than ever the way I usually do and, and hopefully to, to come back uh, and swing strong for Davis Cup first of all and then for the American summer. This will be Songa's first ever Grand Slam semi-final and he will meet Novak Djokovic in the semi-final on Friday. Now, that's after the world number two ended Bernard Tomic's fine run at this year's Wimbledon. But not before the Australian stretched Djokovic to a four-setter to eventually lose the match in 2-6, 6-3, 3-6 and 5-7. The other semi-final matchup is between Nadal and Murray. Nadal also had to endure a four-setter but no serious threat posed by Marty Fish while Murray was in superb form claiming a straight sets win over Feliciano Lopez for his third consecutive Wimbledon semi-final appearance. So the men will play on Friday while the ladies' last four matchup is set up for today. And the story here is all about Sabini Lishiki. The German who was given a wildcard entry beat Marian Bartoli in the quarterfinals in 6-4, 6-7 and 6-1. And as you can see, she was just plain happy. Well, it's still unbelievable. You know, I, I cannot explain how I feel at the moment. It's, it was just such a tough road back, and it's so wonderful to be standing on center court in Wimbledon, uh, which I love so much, you know, and it's just, I'm just so happy. <laughs> Now the fairy tale, as in all fairy tales, reaches its climax, climax as the young lass meets the wicked witch. Well, she's a hot grunting witch, and that's just in the fairy tale. But in reality, it's the 2004 champ Maria Sharapova. Well, in the other matchup today, we'll see my earlier pick for final appearance, Victoria Azarenka, who will play 8 seed Petra Kvitova. And even though I predicted that it could be an Azarenka Sharapova final, that will not go down well with the British viewing public, to say the least because it'll be a wailing final. Nothing to do with largest mammal on earth or the resurrection of Bob Marley. But if both are featured in the final, you can expect this from Sharapova. And she holds the record for the loudest grunts at Wimbledon, 105 decibels back in 2009. That's equivalent to the noise of a car horn when you're standing just three feet away. While Azarenka was recorded at the loudest this year with 95 decibels. So when you put them together, what do you get? Grunt force trauma.
Oh, God save our ears. But officials at Wimbledon want Azarenka and Sharapova to lower or stop the grunting altogether and blame the noise on an education problem among the young players. While former great Martina Navratilova calls it shrieking and cheating. But the fact of the matter is that the grunting and the, well, it's not even grunting, it's shrieking, uh, has got to subside, if not disappear altogether, because it's not necessary. There's no reason to be making that noise when you're hitting a ball. We're not lifting, you know, 200 pounds over our head. And quite frankly, I think it's kind of productive because it takes a lot of effort and energy to make that kind of noise. And when players get really, really tired, they're not making that noise anymore because they don't have the energy for it. So I would actually suggest to my player, you are making it worse for yourself. So I would be coaching my player not to do it, never mind the fact that it's against the rules, but it's bad for my player. Uh, but it is against the rules. Uh, I mean, if it's a hindrance, and, and it is a hindrance, when they're yelling that loud, it's a hindrance. And uh, so the umpire needs to step up to the plate and say, you know, to calm down. And if you don't, it's a point penalty. And I guarantee you, once you start giving out point penalties, they're going to stop it. Never thought of it as cheating. Well, that's pretty much taken up most of our time today. Tomorrow, we will bring you the results from the women's semi-final and catch up on some Premier League transfer news. With Berbatov set to be moving to Valencia, Marseille wants to bring Didier Drogba back to France and Barcelona have made an offer for Cesc Fabregas and they want Sami Nasri as well. All still rumours, but I'll try to make sense of it all and bring you the latest in tomorrow's update. So before we leave you, you know, it's a pitiful thing to see the world number one tennis player without a Grand Slam title under her belt. And at this year's Wimbledon, Caroline Wozniacki lost out again, but realized that she could do something else. And it was Novak Djokovic who made her realize her potential. Look at you. Yeah, sorry, I have a question there. For, yes, since sir. I'm a little bit late. But, uh, Excuse me, where are you from? Which, I which am press? from the Monaco newspaper oh, okay. on uh, Avenue Princess Glass. Oh, okay, great. So now you have this losing streak of uh, one. So what are you going to do to, to change that? Um, I will try to look up to some um, women's players who have been so consistent with their wins. For example, like Karolina Wozniak, I don't know if you heard about her. She has become a role model for all of us ATP players. So I think I'm going to look up for her. I'm going to try to look some of her matches and try to break this uh, losing streak of one. <laughs> try to get on the right path. <laughs> Bye. I'm sarcastic, but it's Djokovic, so he was sarcastic. But at least she'll be a good-looking tennis journalist. Or maybe we could give her a job here. Uh, oops, I forgot. We've got no budget. So it's time to end this episode, conserve, and be back with more tomorrow. Until then, I'm Patrick for Who Has Sports saying it's bye for now.